Okay, hello everyone. Today's topic is the role of data, AI, and cloud in Formula One. And to help me discuss this topic, I'm joined by jo uh, Rob Smedley. You are a, a automotive engineer. You have uh, worked as a race engineer for Ferrari and for uh, for Williams. Yeah, and amongst now others. amongst others. And now you are the, a, a te technical, technical consultant to the Formula One. Yeah, more or less. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about you, what you do and what your role involves. Well, my role really is is working across the the Formula One and AWS partnership. Mm -hmm. um, so it's 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 a really strong partnership where we're constantly trying to innovate. So we're trying to innovate on on Formula One uh, on on AWS technologies using Formula One subject matter expertise, um, and you know bringing together data, innovation, technology for a more engaging um, experience for, for, for the fans. So, so, so my role is to, you know, I play a, a strong technical role in that, but I also get to tell the stories like this, which is really cool. Nice. So how important is data and AI and cloud and connectivity for F1? It's of an increasingly growing importance. Um, so, you know, around about five years ago, when AWS partnered with Formula One, um, there was a very strong notion that you know Formula One sat on a lot of valuable data, mm. and how could it use that data to bring about a more immersive and more engaging fan experience? Mm. Um, and therefore, you know, that's where I came into the picture as well with my team um, to work on, um, you know, like the data insights, so the F1 insights that, that we now see popping up on the screen. Um, and that's using data to tell all of the hidden stories. Formula One is such a complex sport. We've got such a huge influx of, of new fans mm. that you know, I very strongly believe, and I'm not the only one, um, that without the use of data, there's no way that we'd be able to tell those stories. So, mm. so this is where the, you know, the partnership is really accelerating fan engagement. So what are some of the biggest challenges when it comes to data in F1? Uh, well, it's very much big data. Um, you know, we have um, many different sources of data, so very disparate. So, if you again, you go back to the start of the partnership, F1 understood that it sat on a great deal of value in all of that data, um, but it wasn't able to leverage that. Mm -hmm. So, this is where you know we come in five years ago and started to build different data systems. So, if you imagine Formula One the data influx that you've got from Formula One, the data sources are the car data, so the, 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 the telemetry data coming off the instruments of the cars. Um, you've got 20 cars circulating the track. You've got the timing data. Um, so that's the, the transponders around the track that pick up the car position and, and the time of day. And then from that, you can, you can um, assimilate the, 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 the lap time or the sector time. You've got weather data. You've got tire data. You've got track data. You've got metadata. So the, the we're generating a huge amount of data, but the biggest challenge is trying to ingest all of that data, normalize it, synchronize it in a way that then we can get to it and, and, and bring out some really cool analytics. So it's fusing the data together and then doing the analysis and presenting that in a really understandable way that all the fans can get and, and engages them further into into the race. Interesting. So I'm a, I'm a big <coughs> F1 fan. I've done some work with Red Bull and McLaren. So I know it from a team perspective how they use data. How is that different from how F1 in general uses data? Do they share all of their data? Where, where, where does the team data stop and the F1 data start and vice versa? So, so if you think about who owns which parts of the data, so, so Formula One owns all of the timing data. Mm -hmm. So all of the, that, that timing data that we discussed with the, from the transponders and the receivers around the track for each of the cars, Formula One owns all, all of that. The teams generate and own all of their own car data. So the teams get to see you know, this huge amount of, of car data. There's something like 300 sensors on a mm -hmm. car. Each of those sensors is generating a signal. Mm -hmm. You can fuse them all together so you can get literally billions of combinations mm -hmm. of, of, um, of, of mathematical channels, of virtual channels, mm -hmm. if you like, from these raw signals. Um, the team owns all of that data for its two cars. Mm -hmm. um, but what Formula One does is it takes a small subset of that data, 
of each of the team's data and then it merges that together. So, so, so Formula One has a view of all of the team's data, whereas mm -hmm. the team itself only can view its own data. Apart from some um, public um, channels such as GPS, so the teams can view the other team's GPS signals and from that, mm -hmm. if you know the you know, GPS is simply mm -hmm. a, a Cartesian coordinate with, with a timestamp, so from that you can generate a speed signal. Um, so the teams can look at that aspect of, of their competitors, but they can't look at all of the data that Formula One gets. Mm -hmm. And Formula One then uses that data to create all of these insights. Interesting. So what's the aim of the partnership between AWS and F1? The aim of the partnership is very much to um, create innovation in Formula One and in the Formula One ecosystem that engages the fans. So it's all about using cloud technology, AI, ML, and, and, and bringing all that together to, to create a better Formula One, a more understandable Formula One, mm -hmm. first and foremost, because Formula One is quite complex to understand. So making it more understandable, but giving the, the, the fans bite-sized chunks mm -hmm. of, of data, of, of packaged data, to help them to understand and to engage them further and, and to, to make them more ex immersed in the experience. And how, how is this data and the, the AWS's computing capabilities, how are they contributing to race strategy and car design? So, I mean, it's a great question. And, you know, in terms of the, the, the car design itself, um, that's a great story because the 2022 car, so the new generation of car that is, you know, just over 18 months old, um, that was designed principally on AWS technologies. And, and the story goes that the, the, the source is, is very much about, you know, we wanted to build a better Formula One that was more engaging for the fans. So mm. we act, asked the fans, what did they want? Mm. Um, the very, you know, the resounding response that came back was that the fans wanted um, closer racing, more wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Now, if you looked at the old generation of cars, um, that simply wasn't possible because of the aerodynamic wake structure that come off the car in front. So for a car to follow behind, um, it became very difficult mm. because they were running in this very turbulent, dirty air. Mm. Um, so Formula One started to work with the FIA, the governing body, um, to build a set of regulations, an aerodynamic architecture of the car, if you like, that was much less detrimental to the car behind, which means that then you get this closer wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, which the fans wanted. Um, we built that on computational fluid dynamics, um, so that's a, a virtual wind tunnel. Mm. That is a huge amount of compute power when you mm. run a two-car simulation like we did. So mm. we went to AWS, we said, right, we've got this problem, this is a technology problem, um, it's, a, it's a HPC problem, it's a cloud problem, so it's, it's, it's right in your wheelhouse, if you like. Mm. AWS come up with a solution. We went from iterations, design iterations, that took 40 hours to run in the, in the simulation, down to around about six. So that meant that that, that was incredibly, um, you know, a huge step in terms of, of, of design agility. And that meant that we ended up with a, with a product at the start of 22, which was actually gave us closer racing. Fantastic. Um, I also know that you're involved in AWS Deep Racer and AWS Game Day. Do you want to explain a little bit more about this and the contribution it is making to F1 and also the impact so far on things like STEM talent development? Yeah, sure. I mean, so, so Deep Racer is a really cool program from, from, from AWS and some years ago um, we, we wanted to bring that closer to Formula One. Um, so it's essentially an autonomous um, vehicle. It's a it's a small scale autonomous vehicle. Um, the the initial league system is run virtually. So you build your AI model, you build your ML model that that will then control this vehicle, mm -hmm. and you're trying to get it around the track in the fastest way possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then we then with with a with a Formula One driver called Daniel Ricardo. Um, myself, Daniel, and Tatiana Calderon, who's a who's a female racer, um, we um, put together this 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 little program where we actually made the deep racer car look like a Formula One car, and then we all raced together. We all learned about ML, or those two guys learned about ML, um, and we put together this program. 
big plans for that program to bring it again closer to um, to bring it to closer to Formula One. So so you know even plans to have a full scale Formula One car autonomously racing around a racetrack. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that that's big news that is yeah, happening. Fascinating. Um, the game day, you know, that's what we're here at the London Summit to to um, to oversee. Game day is a really cool engagement program. So so what game day is about is it's is it's trying to um, synthesize, if you like, a Formula One team's work. So Formula One, you know, everything that we just talked about in terms of ingesting data, storing that data, capturing it, normalizing it, synchronizing it, analyzing it. We're trying to do that on a much sc smaller scale. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a 90 minute challenge, if you like. Teams of, of, of four developers, DevOps, systems architects, they all come together. Um, and they pit their wits against each other in these defined challenges. So you're trying to take data from the Spanish Grand Prix, um, real Formula One data, timing data, car data, weather data, so exactly like we just talked mm -hmm. about it for, for the real thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then they set these challenges to build a dashboard, um, so a synchronized da dashboard where you can watch the car on the video link mm -hmm. and you can get the timing data at the same time. You can see some GPS traces. So it's a really cool link and it's all built on AWS services. And, nice. and, and actually, you know, we started this last year. Um, that was kind of the pilot year. This year has gone absolutely crazy in terms of engagement, in terms of the, the, uh, the amount of fans that we're getting coming down, the amount of teams that we're getting coming down and, and wanting to take part. You know, we're well oversubscribed here in London. Very good. You mentioned F, F1 Insights already. Can you take us through what that is and how this is generating benefit? Yeah, so we we take the, the 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 teams data, if you like, so the car data and the timing data, the weather data. We take all of those different data sources, and then we 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 package them together to create small insights. So, so for example, if if you know to understand race strategy um, just from the TV feed and the commentary is very very difficult mm -hmm. because there's quite often you know some cars won't have pitted, other cars have pitted. They've you know, between the cars that have pitted, they'll have fit a different compound, mm -hmm. that type of thing. So, so w how does this really play out? Mm -hmm. You know, what's going to really happen without data and without kind of, you know, um, using the, the technology to explain that story? It's very, very difficult with mm -hmm. the fans. So, so five years ago, we started to introduce the F1 Insights and, and built those on, on, on AWS technology um, using, you know, pretty innovative techniques. Um, and every so often there'll be a snippet that you see come on the screen. So as you're watching the, the Formula One race, there'll be one of these data insights that pop up. And it may not be telling you the story of even of what's happened in front of you, because don't get a Formula One track is, is five kilometers long mm. with 20 cars on it. So, so the TV can only concentrate on, on two, three cars at, at a time, you know, whatever's in, in the shot at that point. There's another four and a half kilometers, let's say, of track of, of where there's various actions going on. And that could be really key action to mm. how the race strategy is going to unfold. So we try to, um, you know, we watch the race and we, we have software that, that is telling us where are the key stories, what are, what are emerging at that moment. And then we pop these data insights up on, onto, the, onto the screen so that the fans can understand it. And we're finding that the fans now are really leaning into that, that level of insight. That's good. And I guess this data then becomes available to AI and machine learning. So what can fans expect in the future in terms of integrating AI and advanced machine learning to help them better understand what's going on? Well, we're already using um, you know, ML. So we're already using various um, machine learning algorithms to, to create these, the, the, the insights. But I think that gets stronger you know, as, as, we, as we move to you know, more advanced um, artificial intelligence as we move to, to Gen AI, for example. Again, trying to forecast, that's something that we're doing at the minute through through um, more traditional um, machine learning algorithms. But if you look at, at, at Gen AI, um, you know, how can we use that to, to forecast even further into the race and to keep the fans more engaged? So there's lots of different innovations going on. You know, we're using innovations as well um, as well as, as Gen AI to understand what fans want. You know, yeah. it's not just about giving them what we think that the fans want, but it's actually getting to the 500 million fans worldwide, um, modeling that demographic using uh, AI techniques, using generative AI, and then trying to understand them much better and give them products that they actually want. You know, Formula mm. One should never lose its DNA. It's about, you know, these 20 gladiators that go out in these, these, these 
you know, on the ground fighter jets <laughs> and race for two hours on a Sunday afternoon. Should never lose that DNA, but we should be able to tailor it around that mm. to give the fans, especially the new demographic of fans, much more what they want. And you won't be able to do that without, without using um, AI techniques. And that's mm. definitely something that Formula One and AWS are innovating on right now. The other big agenda item in F1 is sustainability. There's a pledge to get to net zero by 2030. How is this partnership helping with that? You know, again, it's, it's all about innovation. Um, so it's looking to, um, you know, how Formula One can utilize AWS innovations and technologies in order to help it on that sustainability path. Um, so there's, there's the, the sustainability charter of Formula One. If you imagine getting to, to, to carbon net zero um, by any date, let alone the dates that Formula One has set itself, which are, are always demanding, mm. right, because we're Formula One, um, is going to be a challenge. But we won't do that without technology and you won't do that without heavy reliance, again, on, on artificial intelligence. Um, you know, maybe even Gen AI, we might be bringing that into, in, into, into this subject. Um, but it's just, it's indicative and it's a microcosm of, of how the partnership works together across so many aspects of, 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 of the Formula One um, infrastructure, the Formula One um, ecosystem. Mm. What future technology are you most excited about when you look maybe five, ten years ahead and think this is going to make an impact in, in the F1 world? You know, I, it's, AI is still a really exciting um, area for development. You know, we in, in Formula One, certainly in the teams going back um, about 15 years ago now, we started to just dip our toe in the water of, of machine learning, um, neural networks, trying to, to, to use um, that kind of technology to, to optimize the car mm -hmm. and to kind of be, be guided and driven. I think that is becoming much more prevalent. We're still not at the level where, which, which I believe we can get to in Formula One, either at the team's level in terms of um, you know, the, 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 the technology and guidance and producing a more optimized Formula One car, or at the league level, which is Formula One, mm -hmm. which is, which is um, producing a better sport, mm -hmm. right? So, so I think that, that the AI, um, broadly AI, in particular machine learning, there's still a, a huge amount that we can do um, in that area and it's and it's a really exciting time for it. Very good. Thank you so much for your time today, Rob. That Thank was you. fascinating. It's such a fascinating word, F1. So anyone who ever wants to re-watch or re-listen to this, head to my YouTube channel or my podcast.